What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Doing so good. Awesome, awesome, man. I am glad to be home. I've been on the road probably for the last two months, it, it feels like, uh, every week, and uh, it feels good to be at home. So, uh, But we had a great guest today, um, a man of many talents, and so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Thanks, Chief. Today's guest is a singer-songwriter. He's won a slew of awards, including an Oscar, Golden Globe, and a Grammy for The Weary Kind, the theme from the 20, 2009 film Crazy Heart. He currently stars as Walker on Paramount's hit TV show Yellowstone, which returns this Sunday for its highly anticipated fourth season. Let's hear it for Ryan Bingham. Hey. <laughs> Hey, Ryan, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, we're doing good, man. Good, man. Thank you so much for joining the show. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, glad you got you know, to spend some time with us today. Can you tell our viewers where you're joining us from? Uh, yeah, I'm in a recording studio out here in uh, Topanga, California at the moment. Topanga, California. That's terrific. Yeah, it's not a bad spot out here. The weather's real nice, and uh, yeah, just kind of a place to uh, find some inspiration and uh, hopefully bring some some new music to everyone soon. Oh, that's terrific! And the military community is so excited to have you with us today. Can you share a little bit about um, any type of military connection you have with us? Any friends or family who have served? You know, I, I think the the most part is just throughout. Shoot, I guess the last 10 or 15 years, you know, I've been on the road playing music in a band and traveling all over this country from, you know, coast to coast, uh, from the borders of Canada down to Mexico and everywhere in between. And I've just, I've met a lot of people, a lot of men and women that have served in the, in the armed forces that have shared a lot of stories about, you know, the songs that, um, that really resonated with. Chief and Leah, are you guys there? I hope we can get him back because you guys don't want to try to hear me sing. <laughs> That'd be not good. <laughs> but Leah, you were saying that <laughs> I know karaoke era, and Leah, you were saying that you had your um and I, I don't want to say it out loud because what if it trips everybody, but your hey Alexa oh, was you playing. Like, Do we get him you. back? Is he back? There, Hello. Yeah, there I'm we sorry. are. Okay. I don't know where it cut off there, but uh, it's okay. We're we're so happy you're back. We were just joking that like you don't want to hear us try to sing your songs. Like that would yeah, go over real well. Yeah, no, we we were gonna tell Aaliyah to turn Alexis back Alexis back on and have Ryan Bingham singing in the background. So there you take, go. Take come back. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. Karaoke <laughs> hour. Karaoke hour, exactly. And you were sharing um that you know you had been traveling all over with your band and you've had the opportunity to meet service members along your journey that's the, that's where we cut off uh oh uh oh i think it's karaoke maybe it's the question maybe it's not a good question <laughs> yeah i think it has to be the question okay well when we come back to him we'll just move on to the next question Absolutely. Do do we still have Ryan with us? I sure hope so. I'm here. I I, I can see you guys and hear you guys. Good oh, yeah. deal. No, good deal. I can, deals. I can so hear good. you. Can you guys see me? So okay. Ryan. Uh -huh. We can. Okay. Yes, we're good. So Chief Julie and I, we're coming to you from Dallas, Fort Worth, and we know you've spent uh, time here in Texas. So. Can you share with our viewers what are some of your favorite Texas memories? Oh, man, I, I really got my start playing music in Texas. You know, I, I'm originally from uh, New Mexico, uh, born and raised in, in, uh, in Hobbs. I, I grew up 
spent a lot of time in Texas. My family traveled around quite a bit and uh, uh, lived in Midland and Odessa. I spent some time in Fort Worth, um, Houston, down in Laredo on the border for a while. Um, and, I, and eventually ended up in Austin playing music in the bars down there. And it's really where I cut my teeth. And uh, I've just got uh, a lot of friends, a lot of good memories down there. Just um, uh, maybe just the support of the uh, of kind of the state and the support of local songwriters and, and singers and places that they gave me to play. It's just like I can't even begin to list all the names of the little bars and all the little towns that I've played in throughout the years out there. And, um, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it was a great place to, to get a start. Yeah. And, and you, it sounds like you pretty much named every city that's in, te in Texas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, 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 yeah, I'm sure you got a lot of great stories and a lot of good memories. Um, but before you kind of broke into music and acting, I heard you were a successful bull rider. Uh, can you can you tell us about your adventure uh, in the rodeo? Because yeah, I'm, I'm just imagining myself on a bull. Uh, it just I know it wasn't go well. I know for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know about successful, but I think she gave it a try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my family ranched when I was growing up, and my, my uncle rode bulls, and uh, so I got into it as a young kid, going to junior rodeos on the weekends, and um, just really kind of li lived and breathed it for a long time while I was growing up, and uh, ended up in Stephenville, Texas. I rode bulls for Tarleton State uh, University there in Stephenville, and, and had my pro card for a couple of years, at kind of about the same time I was transitioning into playing music, and um but uh, yeah, that was really kind of all I ever wanted to be growing up was uh, I have a cowboy like a lot of folks in my family and I, and I loved riding bulls and I loved uh, just, uh, I just loved it all. So that's, that's really kind of, you know, the background of even how, kind of how I got into music was playing on the tailgate to the pickup at the, at the rodeo in the parking lot, you know, singing songs for my friends and about the adventures on the weekends and things like that. So that's, that's where it all starts for sure. So, so, so what, how what's did you make that? Oh, go oh no, go ahead. No, go ahead, Julie. No, you go. You go. No, no. So I was just trying to figure out what's what's more of an adrenaline rush: being on the on the back of a bull, or getting kicked off a back of a bull, or or playing in front of thirty thousand people. You know, there's a lot of similarities there. Um, you know, it's all a dance, and trying to just move and stay in tune with all that energy out there. I, you know. I dang, I dang sure get the same amount of butterflies walking onto a stage than I did when I was crawling on the back of the bull bucket shoe. But uh, yeah, I guess I guess you could say the, the consequences are a, a little less dire than <laughs> <laughs> hanging on to the back of the bull. <laughs> so the crowd can be rough sometimes, like but they're not, they're not that rough. <laughs> So it sounds like bull riding kind of led you to your career as a singer songwriter. Can you talk a little bit about that transition between the careers? Yeah, you know, I, I was working for a guy named Mac Altizer down in Del Rio, Texas. He had a, a rodeo company down there called Bad Company Rodeo. And um, you know, I was working on the ranch for him and and helping at the rodeos, just feeding the animals and, and driving them to and fro and all that. And I, and I was also uh, riding bulls and, and entering at some of these rodeos and. He found out that I was playing the guitar for some of my friends and he said, well, shoot, we ought to get you to, you know, play at the hospitality tent for all the cowboys after the rodeo. And, you know, instead of playing out in the parking lot, why don't we set you up on a trailer over here by the barbecue pit and we'll have a little after party. And and that's really how I got into to really performing was just, uh, you know, those guys asking me to play the songs that I was writing. And, um, you know, from there, we'd travel from town to town. It was, it was a bit like a traveling circus, you know, the rodeo was. And. Uh, more often than not, we'd find a little bar afterwards and we'd end up in there and one of my friends or buddies would say, hey, Ryan, why don't you get your guitar and, and come in here and play a song? And, uh, you know, a lot of times we just end up sitting at the bar playing some music and then uh, the bars would start asking me to come back and actually, you know, set up and, and play a show. So before before long, I just had just about as many gigs playing in bars as I did to have rodeos to enter and uh, um and I just, I don't know, that's just kind of where my, my heart led me was to stick to playing the guitar. You know, I, I, I really enjoyed riding bulls, but I was really mostly kind of a weekend warrior. I always had to have some kind of day job during the week to make ends meet. And um, it didn't take long to figure out that the, the guitar felt a lot better in my hands than that shovel did. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ryan, um, 
talk to us a little bit about Crazy Heart. Um, how did you how did you get involved with Crazy Heart? And then what was the the incredible success of the Weary Kind like for you? That was I think right where it all kind of started. Yeah, it was, it was really wild. You know, I was I was a young guy then, and um, you know, I really was just you know I was just kind of a young kid with a guitar playing in some honky tonk bars, and um, didn't really have very high expectations <laughs> of really making a big career out of playing music. Um, I ended up meeting the director through a friend of mine, and he was just interested in me writing a song for the movie, and uh, he gave me a copy of the script, and I read it, and ended up you know coming up with the with the Weary Kind song. And uh, then after we met, he'd come out and see me play in a few places with my band. And he said, well, he said, shoot, we need to get you guys in this movie and you guys be the backing band for, for Jeff Bridges, you know, character. And that's how we got the actual role in the movie. And then from there, it just kind of took off, you know, people, I think just resonated, you know, I guess resonated with the, with the song and uh, you know, it was off to the races there. It's certainly one of my movie. favorite Ryan Bingham songs. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Sorry, I Julie. am on Team Leah. No, I was, I'm was. i on Team Leah on that one. Definitely a, a terrific song, a, a great movie. Um, it's one of those songs that as soon as you hear the beginning of it, you know exactly that it's your song, and um, it's it's mm-hmm. an amazing song, and you deserve all the accolades you received from it. So you are, um, you're in your studio there in California. So does that mean that there's new music coming? And can you share a little bit about what might be ahead? Yeah, you know, it's, I'm kind of in the early stages of a lot of songs right now. I uh, I like to just sit here by myself with the guitar and um, and just kind of come up with little ideas. And a lot, a lot of times it just starts with the music first. And you know, I'll record some music and I'll I'll sit here and listen to it, or I'll or I'll jump in the car and drive around some back roads and just listen to it. And a lot of times those songs will just come to me like that. And so I don't really know what they're going to turn into at the moment. You know, they always kind of go through different phases and stages, but um, right now I'm kind of really focused on, on really kind of a stripped down acoustic kind of story, you know, ballad type song. So uh, we'll, we'll see where that leads. A lot of times I'll start out that way and then, you know, Six months later, there's a 12-piece band on it with rock and roll guitars and beats. <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Here, you know, we'll, we'll see we'll see where the where the universe leads us. Awesome, man! That that sounds real organic, like a real organic process. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to hearing what you got you you cooking up in the studio in the future. Uh, Thank you. So let's let's shift gears to your uh, success on Yellowstone. So, congratulations on that. Um, uh, that consistently ranks as the most watched series on cable. So on Yellowstone, it, you're back for season four, which starts on November the 7th uh, on Paramount. So you play Walker, a ranch hand. So uh, you you are a character. Your character is a fan favorite. So how does your ties to ranch and kind of prepare you for that role? Yeah, I really lucked out. I really get to be a bit of myself on the show. You know, I I have to laugh at a lot of friends who say, like, you know, what's it like acting on the show? And I was like, well, I don't really know if I'm do, so doing so much acting or if I'm just <laughs> <laughs> pretending oh, in certain just situations. Show up and- I feel lucky. Uh, you know, there's so many great actors and actresses on that show. Really, my job is just really watching them and listening to them and, and just kind of reacting to what they're doing. They really kind of hold my hand and lead me through a lot of that stuff. Uh, I really got involved with the show. Um, a bit kind of like Crazy Heart. It started with the music. I met uh, Taylor Sheridan, the writer and, and and the creator of the show, and he wanted me to write some songs for the for the show. And then he he found out that I used to rodeo and did a bit of cowboy stuff. And he said, "Well, well, shoot, we got to get you in this thing as well." And uh, he said, "You know, we'll just start your character off small." And he said, "If you do good, we'll we'll keep you in it." And if uh, he goes, "If you suck, we'll just kill you off." <laughs> so I'm still in there. <laughs> I guess I'm doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're st- Walker's still alive, so that's that's a good thing. Yeah, every every season, I'm like, well, I'm still I'm still alive, and here ain't dead yet, so I guess I'm doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> we got season four coming up this weekend. What can fans expect from Walker this season? You know, I haven't seen the ed- what the edit looks like yet, but I, from what I was there, Montana, and on the set, it sure is wild and crazy. There's just uh, you know. Every time I turn around and, and think that they can't do anything, uh, you know, to top it, I'm just blown away about what they do next. So 
uh, just get ready for a wild ride and, uh, and hang on. That's, that's about all I can say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys are ready for that. So Brian, besides Yellowstone and your music, are um, any projects ahead that you can talk to us about or share? Yeah, you know, I've, I've uh, recently started working with a company called Lone River Ranch Water in West Texas and doing a collaboration with them, some music and their, their products. And that's something that I've, I've really been enjoying. Um, a wonderful guy named Katie Beal Brown out of Midland, Texas is kind of working with that. And um, I, I grew up in that area, so it's kind of nice to be involved in something that started where, where I come from. You know, I've got some new music coming out hopefully soon and i um, looking forward to, you know, working on Yellowstone some more. There's a couple of other film projects that I've, I've been looking into. But uh, right now I'm just, you know, focusing on this music and um, getting ready for the new year and, you know, seeing where it takes me. Absolutely. And uh, you got a super captive audience right now. You got, um, you know, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Guardians, uh, uh, just all you know, the whole military community kind of watching right now and the, so i want to give you an opportunity to give any words of encouragement uh that you can share with our heroes yeah you know i you know first i'd just like to say thank you um you know i played a show last week up in bozeman montana um for a thing called heroes and horses that kind of helps soldiers coming back from overseas and um you know i was thinking about it a lot you know i don't know if the video cut off earlier when we first started but i've had i've met quite a few men and women that have, that have served in the armed forces over the you know past 10 or 15 years, just traveling around the country. I've had a lot of folks come to shows and, um, you know, write me letters and, and tell me how, you know, the music may have helped them in a certain way, or they had a, you know, a good friend or someone close to them or a loved one that they had lost. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I've just listened to those stories and I've, uh, shared a lot of tears with a lot of folks too backstage after concerts and before and and in letters and things and so i just kind of you know i'd like to take the opportunity to just say that uh you know you guys helped me get through it too you know these these songs kind of go back and forth and um it really means a lot and i, and I hope that you know hope you know that i feel the same way like as much support that you guys have given me like i i want to give it back and um, and do everything i can to um you know help some folks heal from things. And if music helps in any of those ways, then uh, that's what really encourages me to, to write songs and, and continue to kind of go out there and perform and, and play as if, uh, as if the music can do that kind of thing and bring, you know, bring people together on a bigger level or, or help people get through hard times or rough things or you know, celebrate friends or loved ones that they don't have in their lives anymore. And so um, you know, that's the biggest thing I like to say say thanks and that uh, I'm, I'm right here too with you. Thanks for that, Ryan. Um, your music matters. And I know Chief has mentioned this before that music and art really help. It's, it's an outlet for, for service members as far as listening and, and viewing and can kind of help them find home again. So what you're doing matters to, to all who serve. So. Thank you for sharing your words of thanks. And you have a lot of uh, fans out there and they're watching with us from all over the world. I wanna just turn to our Facebook feed. So I'm gonna just read some of the comments um, that are rolling in. You're getting obviously lots of likes and loves. And again, Lisa, who says that she loves, Lo she loves Lone River Ranch Water. So you got a fan there. Awesome. And Ryan, <laughs> thanks for that, Lisa. Glad you're watching with us. And Ryan left um, a good comment earlier in the broadcast. He said, back in 2006, 2007, at one of my friend's weddings outside of Weatherford, you were there. And we all got together after the ceremony was over and we listened to you sing to us around a stock tank. It was one of the coolest and random experiences of my life. Big fan, Ryan. Awesome. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> So you made a good impression on him. Um, Shelly is also watching and she says, I'm a big fan of your character on Yellowstone. I really hope you don't get taken to the train station again. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then um, Chief, there's a comment for you that was left that 
It's from John Wayne. It's from John Anderson. He says, Chief is taller than he looks. So, there you go. <laughs> you are well, really you, tall. John. Huh? <laughs> you are really tall. Yeah, I, w I went to, I went to, uh, it was a quick story. And big shout out to Fort Irwin, Edwards Air Force Base, and Travis Air Force Base. I was there in California last last week. And they were awesome hosts, and I, I enjoyed the, the store. But uh, John was, you know, he, he pulled up to me, um, well, we, we had we had dinner the night before, but the day of uh, the in question, uh, we were at a store uh, and I was showing some love to one of his associates. He's like, Chief, uh, you, I thought you were like five, six on five, seven on, on Chief Chat. So uh, you and I'm, I'm like six, one. So he's like, you're a lot taller than I thought. I thought I was going to be looking down to you. But now I'm looking up to you. I feel some type of way. So uh, I guess the TV does add 10 pounds and it makes you look about five inches shorter, too. So. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome i also i wanted to share that um from chief's page gabriella says thank you for joining us so ryan um before we say goodbye can you remind us where can viewers go to keep up with you your music and also the latest on yellowstone yeah you can go to my website ryanbingham.com and um, all of the social media pages, they're all out there. They're pretty easy to find. You just kind of type in my name and you, you can find it pretty easy. So, uh, uh, yeah, thanks for kind of tuning in and, uh, and thanks for all the support out there, you guys. Well, Ryan, I know you, uh, you don't have any allegiance to any particular service, but I, I would, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to, to, to get some allegiance for this particular show because, uh, this weekend is the, is the Army versus Air Force game uh, here in Dallas, Texas, and uh, which which we have a big part. The exchange is going to have a big big role in that game. Uh, but me being an airman, I, I need you. I need to hear from your mouth. Go Air Force, <laughs> beat Army. Oh, uh, you that would, make, that would make my day. I see, right? All right, go Air Force, beat the Army. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Catch it all right now. Oh my gosh, Chief, that was coercion. You basically forced that out of his mouth. Like that was such coercion. At least I got no, some was, witnesses there. So no, listen, listen that, that, that was part subtle. of the script. That was part of the script that you wrote, Julie. What are you talking about? So. Yeah, right. Now he's gonna, now he's gonna have all these angry soldiers after him. Yeah, yes, yes. Well. Well, I hope you don't have a lot of so, uh, army friends because uh, you know they're gonna look at you sideways, Ryan. But it's oh, all good. I, I appreciate I'm you. All, I'm gonna catch all kinds of stuff now. That my phone's already blowing up right now. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> "Why are you ready so for that Air Force?" <laughs> yes, but now for oh, our yeah. viewers, uh, for our viewers out there, thank you for your support and love. Um, you can rewatch this episode and all of our previous Chief Chat episodes on YouTube and Spotify. And uh, of course, Ryan, man, it's been a super honor and pleasure uh, having you with us today. Uh, like I said, you, your music transcends generations and and it and it gets our minds off of all the craziness that we deal with, uh, specifically military members and families on a daily basis. And you kind of take us back home or you or you kind of get us through a situation just through your music. And so thank you for that. And also, you know, you got some acting chops on you, too. So, man, you. You got you got careers all over the place. So uh, just, you know, keep keep blessing the world with your talents and your art um, and, and the folks here at the exchange and all your, the nation's hero. We support you and we love you and we appreciate you. Thank you as well, you guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So good luck and best of luck on uh, new music and season four of Yellowstone. Uh, thank you very much. And we're going to go ahead and close the episode out. Chief Chat out. All right. See you guys. <laughs>